one who are coming from North Africa and uh, their ancestors from North Africa and the Western Europe. Some of them are coming from the Eastern Europe. So they are in that uh, new cauldron of, of the state of Israel and they start blending their identity over there. And that defines their political and economic rights and privileges also. Some of, of Sephardi Jews are not allowed to serve in the specific uh, institutions of Israel. So, so these sort of uh, conflicts and, and uh, challenges, they lie in every and in, in, in any country. It's not unique. Look at, look at the Hindi speaking uh, population of India. Uh, what is the divide between South and North in India? Uh, the South with its Dravidian origin and the North with its so-called Aryan origin has got altogether a different outlook on, on life. Who says that Indian Union has been a single political unit uh, for all its years? After Ashoka, uh, almost 1600 years, uh, India has been into small little principalities, not just India, all over the globe. Uh, do you think there was an Italy in history? It was Rome. It was Florence. It was Venice. These were small little Milan, these small little principalities, and it took them almost 150 years to unify these principalities and convert it into a new nation state and became Italy. It so goes with the Spanish experiment, so goes with the German experiment, so goes with the French experiment, so goes with the English experiment. Uh, if someone thinks that United Kingdom was in a 2000 years experiment, they're completely mistaken. It was Northumbria. King Alfred was the one who unified them under the idea of super England. Uh, they were uh, a minor sub-identities like Balochi and Sindhi and Pashtun and so on and so on. The issue is sometimes people take conscious effort, the ruling elite, that how to construct this uh, nation building, how to go about this project. I think so in our case, uh, the ruling elite uh, did not uh, mull over well on, on, on this initiative. And when I say ruling elite, does not mean just political ruling elite. It is the intelligentsia, it is the academia, it is the bureaucracy, it is the business leadership, all of it. You, you come across uh, people even on the liberal side of the aisle or on the conservative side of the aisle. Uh, when such questions are arise, I at times feel that we have got very skewed and prejudiced views and we are just fixated and we think whatever our opinions are, they are primarily gospel truth and we are all dogmatic. That is part of the problem. Um, I have a question here. Uh -oh. um, yes. Yes. Um, so um, your vision for Pakistan, which this session was supposed to be about, right? So does it involve following the constitution? Like following the constitution? Yeah, because um, after the Punjab and uh, KP governments got dissolved, you're supposed to hold elections in 90 days. Why haven't we held elections yet? I'm joining. Shall I? Uh, first of all, I have come across so many people that like I am uh, the product of a putsch, uh, a forceful takeover of a government. Uh, I feel like I'm a product of a military takeover and I had to respond to such challenging question. In fact, I am the product of a constitutional order which you are referring to. Uh, there was a leader of the house in an assembly uh, which was probably elected by all of you or many of you and there was a leader of opposition which was again elected by many of you there would be many uh, questions and views about the individuals but this is what constitution refers to as a procedure. They agreed 
on my name and I am so called product of that constitutional order. So at least we are interacting in a civil, normal and constitutional manner. There is nothing unconstitutional about it. When will be the uh, elections? The outgoing parliament, they have passed a law. A law, many of, of uh, students here probably would be the gra uh, graduates of law, that the election dates would be announced by the Election Commission of Pakistan. And I am the caretaker prime minister. I am not the chief election commissioner. That is part of the problem. If I had the dual role, by the end of this conversation, I would have given you a date. As it is not in my mandate, all I can do or um, our government can do that we have to assist that role, provide the financial assistance, the security and others. And, and once that requirement is asked of us, I can assure you that we will fulfill uh, our duty. KP and uh, Punjab's election was prior to our, our coming. And I can only refer to that, that there is an article which is 254 in constitution also. And that says that if something is late, uh, does not uh, make it unconstitutional. So whenever you uh, go and, and, and find out it in the constitution, it's, there is an article 254. Uh, oh, yes, I'm sure it's 254. Go through that. Unfortunately, sometime if due to circumstances, any act, if it is late for certain reason, does not make it unconstitutional just on the basis that it has happened late. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, and it's an honor and privilege to have you in front of us. Um, my question stems from the previous question, which was on the election date. But when you look at the election process, what um, measures would you as a caretaker government be taking to avoid all the unconstitutional or any external undemocratic factors intervening into the electoral process, which we have been observing throughout um, the history of Pakistan. Um, and from that, uh, I would use the example of the recent elections, which were, which just happened in Karachi, um, where PTI and jamaat islami collectively, they won a majority. But I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. But PTI was not the only thing. I don't know what happened. I don't know what Eventually, I think PP ka hi chair bana tha. Uh, PP ka ek chairman mayor elect hua tha. Uh, I see this happening on a larger scale as well. And yeah, you as a tier, uh, uh, caretaker government, I think, can have an impact on regulating the election commissioner. So over to you. Once we are done with the clapping part, I'll start. Uh, look, let's have an honest conversation rather than a clever one. Okay. And I want all of you to think in an honest manner. Pakistan is a transitional democracy. What is a transitional democracy? It's a subject which is taught in many uh, universities around the world. We are not a settled democracy. Uh, there was a democracy in the Europe. Uh, it has uh, taken its own shape, where it morphed from dictatorship to, to civilian supremacy, and it took them few centuries. It, is, it, it was not that easy uh, journey. We want to have it a bit easy way, just having few conversations here in the halls and get all those subtle questions, which is related to political power, economic power, and social power. There are two instances in history. One is called French Revolution and the other is called Glorious Revolution, which was in the case of uh, James I, who fled and the uh, power was transformed from the monarchy to the parliament in English case. This was called Glorious Revolution because it was bloodless. And the other one, 
I, I'm sure you are aware of the Galatons and the rest of the experiments related to that. And it was a bit gory and, and ugly. Uh, when you want to have a transitional democracy morphed into a settled democracy, there has to be a process. Uh, first of all, we are a transitional democracy. We are not a settled democracy. Uh, all the PTI or the pro-PTI people are talking about the democratic reforms, electoral reforms, post ouster of PTI's government. Prior to that, you do not see that narrative coming from, from their cadre and their leadership. As you refer to a situation where the outcome was uh, for the f in, or in, for the favor of, of a PPP candidate, do you remember what happened with the chairman Senate? Who did it? Well, just forget it. Who did it? All of you know. All of you know. I was also part of it. What I am referring over here is that if we start to cherry picking and we want to rationalize a narrative, we will never reach that destination. We need to settle on certain principles. And those principles should be beyond political parties. It should be for the greater social order. It should it may sometimes suit PPP, it may suit some time PMLN, it may suit some time PTI or JUI, that matter. So we have to be very cautious when we design principles. That's why laws, when they are meant or when they are made, we need to think them through. Unfortunately, what happens in the parliament, I've been part of the parliament, that the different leadership of, of different political parties, they agree on it and they pass it on to their members, and we are just there to sign and, and put our thumbs on that. No one discusses the law either on the floor of the parliament or outside the parliament or even in media. How many times you have seen talk shows on any coming legislation? Just raise your hand. How many of you have seen? I'm, I can beg not a single time. Not a single time. Can you have a... a uh, honest conversation about shaping up the political positions and view in such a milieu. All you have that you pick two or three individuals and encourage them and ignite them to have a dog fight. And the rest of us we enjoy. And this is the level and we have turned uh, our tastes uh, for a, such a consumption of information. And this is part of the tragedy. I wish we had informed discourse like the one we are right, having right now. What's the problem with that 24-inch screen? Why can, uh, can't it provide uh, such informed discourse? Why? All they have to do, they have to bring a guy from PTI, a guy from PMLN, and a guy from PPP, and encourage them to have a dog fight, and we will be just cooking during that time, or having coffee and enjoying. And then next morning, suddenly, what's up to each other? This has become part of political and social culture. Ooh, don't give me an opportunity to refer to the conversation on X previously Twitter. Have you seen the kind of hate, the kind of abuse when I go through those remarks, I feel so low that I am part of this nation. Na meri ma chhodte hain, na meri ban ko chhodte hain, na meri bivi ko chhodte hain. And it's not just with me. I understand it's part of that that uh, package of the public life. Tomorrow you will be here in this position, and you have to go through this. She will be the one who would come to this position. She has to go through this. Think about it. We are all human beings. Do you feel good if you get abused on these relations which I was mentioning for holding a political opinion, which may be even wrong? I might be having a wrong political opinion. What's the, the what's problem with my dead sister who gets abused? What is the what is the 
the fault of my dead mother who gets abused. Why my wife? She's a house. Why? Why does she has to be abused? And all of us, we know, we have encouraged this culture. I, as as a normal citizen of this country, I honestly feel so strongly, and I am so confused at the time that what are we doing with this generation? Because anyone on on Twitter. Definitely, is computerly literate. He's not an illiterate person. He's not part of the problem. Me and you, we are part of the problem. Yes, brother, just go. This girl, yeah. Do Do you have mic? Right. So my question is: that recently we've seen a lot of religious sentiments and religious rhetoric being used by politicians, not only to entice voters but also to kind of attack another political party. So considering we already have a considerable amount of restrictions on the kind of discourse that we can engage in, should this not also be a restricted part of discourse? Considering that yes, we are an Islamic nation, but there are, are a lot of other religions in the country, and also religion is. Considered to be a very sensitive topic, it should not be weaponized and politicized as it is now. I mean, this one uh, generally deserves a clap. Uh, look, religious, as I was initially referring to my my point about the identity. Part of our identity crisis is that we think that we have monopolized the question of identity. and it has to take inspiration from the faith of islam uh what sort of muslim are you are you a ahle hadith muslim or a brailvi muslim or a ahle tashi muslim or deobandi muslim so on and so forth all these sub identities of those so sub uh, sectors of identity creates further confusion so what is the the position of Hindus among us, or Christians among us, or Ahmadis among us, which we, by law, have have divorced them from the main faith. Uh, and then, uh, how do you bring that inclusiveness into this question of identity? And how do you project if there is a nation building, which he was referring to? And how could you articulate that uh, new branding of Pakistan? Or is it even needed? Is it even required? or does the rest of the nations have taken that course answer to all of these question is yes we we need to do that how do we do it i think so we have to do it in a very wise manner i am a follower uh, and a fan of iqbal and i am very much fortunate that i had access to read him in persian uh in one of his couplet he says guft hikmat ra khuda khair e kaseer that god has declared wisdom as a abundant good if he if he gives wisdom to someone he has bestowed him with abundance good so whatever we do we need to do it wise when i say we need to do it wisely i mean the most sacrosanct thing in any society is social order look at the early 13 years of the prophet uh he faced all kind of persecutions but he did not challenge the social order i mean he was excluded from from uh, the society he was physically attacked he was challenged on the ideas which he believed were truthful and the people who were representing according to him the false or the ideas were more dominant they were uh uh part of the group of the oppressors tyranny but he did not challenge the social order so there is a sanctity and sacrosanct status of social order whenever you want to transform such thing you keep that at the back of your mind that while keeping this social order how do you transform those values those systems in a way in a manner where the peaceful coexistence 
is morphed in a way that the jolts are unfelt. The jolts are not there where the disintegration uh, or the chance of the disintegration is there. Who would lead such a journey? You, him, he, me, all of us. All of us has to contribute and think about it. Uh, that's why my request to those jingoistic youngsters who just want to change everything with this one election day, good, go and, and vote that day definitely. But changes, they evolve. They evolve, uh, they are uh, uh, gelled in, sometime in decades, sometime even in centuries. So we have to be profound, we have to be deep, and we have to represent the true soul of ours, whatever it is. So let's explore first ourselves in honesty and then reflect ourselves what we believe in. Thank you. Jee Chanda. As Assalamu alaikum, Honorable Prime alaykum. Minister. Um, it's very heartening to hear you coming over here, the Premier of the country, and saying and encouraging us that LUM students, we seek knowledge, we seek originality. Um, it's very heartening, but then I hearken back to earlier times. A few months ago, right at the start of your tenureship, when you talked about the social contract, you talked about the Pakistan social contract with its citizens, it should be, it should only have a primary purpose. That is to ensure law and order. And I believe that goes against the very statement you gave right now about encouraging originality and seeking knowledge and giving an enabling environment. I believe in order to give an enabling environment to the youth of this nation, there has to be two things, freedom of expression and freedom from discrimination. I believe we here, LUM students, people of, of a very, very privileged class, both in terms of socioeconomic class and religious caste as well, we aren't at the same level and we don't, and the le level freedom of expression we have cannot ever compare to to, to the youth out in South Punjab, out, out, in, out in Karachi, those Afghan refugees, we can, they can never compare to us. So how do you feel that a social contract that is based on law and order primary as a primary purpose can ever ensure those two things to make sure that the rest of our youth actually get a chance to have an enabling environment? First of all, I, I understand your presumption of uh, feeling privileged and at times uh, uh, even as a victim of that available privilege. This, this is a kind of a syndrome many individuals go through and they feel uh, that we are at an advantageous situation from the rest of our compatriots. So they are at a disadvantaged position and they look at them as a victim uh, card. My, my experience is life is, is a bit different. You know? I've done my graduation uh, as a private student from Balochistan University. I've done my BA as a private entity. I've been able to talk to Oxford Union and Harvard Forum of Pakistan. That same uh, individual which you are referring to and the product of that experiment. I have been raised in Quetta. I was born in Quetta. I was raised in Quetta. I attended a school till class seventh in Quetta. And then I went for a, uh, a scholarship, a student to Kerat College cohort for three years and then returned to Quetta. Okay. All my life, what I have done is that I've, I've taken uh, or I've been dependent on books. And I have encouraged myself that my thoughts are stimulated by the new concepts and ideas wherever they are published across the globe. First of all, whatever I was saying over there is not in contradiction over here. When you agree to sit in this space, in this hall. Let me uh, use it as a metaphor for the state or for the society, if it is more convenient. If these walls are the guarantors of state or society, then the social contract or the hall contract, if you may call it, between uh, these two entities has to translate in terms of rights, 
and responsibilities both. We always think that we have got rights. I should have the freedom of expression. I should have the freedom of rights. I should have the freedom to abuse. I should have freedom uh, for arson and so on and so forth. In that social contract, the state also has certain rights. This uh, little girl was talking about the constitution. Better, do you know Article 5 of the constitution? I'm just asking, even if you don't know, it's okay. Yes or no? No. Everyone knows Article 6? Article 5 says that you have to have unconditional loyalty to the state. You cannot put a condition. For instance, if I can metaphor uh, state with, with parents, you can't say if my father provides me evening meal, I will accept him as a father. You can't condition that. You cannot condition your loyalty with the state while having the right of freedom of expression, though it should be ensured. Though it should be ensured. There has to be some rules and regulations which everyone has to follow. If you do not have that framework, you will lead towards chaos. And according to some of the historian, not according to me, it is better to have few centuries of tyranny rather than few weeks of anarchy. Anarchy is bad. Anarchy is worst. You don't have an idea of anarchy. I don't have an idea of anarchy because we have not experienced it. I'll just uh, quote one of the uh, anarchical experiment in the region is with the Yazidi woman uh, in Iraq. The, this girl who was referring to uh, multiple uh, religious identity question, Yazidis are the religious minority in Iraq. And their women, once the state structure collapsed, everything was in an anarchy. When they all had the freedom of expression to say whatever they want to, what would you say maximum in an anarchical situation? The Yazidi women were sold for $50 as a commodity. So then that is the kind of a situation you end in. Do, do we seek such an outcome for 240 million people? I'm sure all of, all of the decent human beings sitting over here are definitely not. When you raise uh, question when you criticize political system, economic system, or any other system, there has to be a rule of engagement. And if you defy those rules, then there are certain laws to penalize uh, uh, that behavior. Bolo, bolo, mera beta, bolo. Sir, I certainly understand what Sir, I certainly understand that if a state gives rights to its citizens, then there should be some responsibilities. And I'm sure we all agree we don't want the outcome which you just described in Iraq or Iran, sorry. Um, but I feel like all of us over here did not do not want the outcome that we're currently seeing in Pakistan. That is when the penalties that is when the penalties are not pro proportionate to the crime committed, even if calling that a crime is just going against <laughs> rules and regulations. Like for like, instance, you're referring to ninth May? And the, out be and the open. outcomes of it. Be open. Why, why are you hesitant? Nobody is That's stifling you here. Come on. Let me. And sir, this, the reason why I am not open and some of us may not be able to be okay, open is another. Is take the initiative. Is, let, is, let me be the open guy. Okay. Take it, sir. Uh, look, uh, probably 9th May is uh, relatively not that big. Uh, a fault or a challenge or a defiant political behavior. Uh, first of all, it is unprecedented. Secondly, we don't have a comparison in our lives. So that's why we take it pretty much cool that it's okay. It was just an anger of one day. So, so what if, if it has happened and that there has to be a proportionate application to handle 
uh, of law enforced vote. The settled democracy of Jeffersonian democracy of the United States of America, uh, what happened in Capitol Hill on that day, a lad or a girl of your age went there and took a picture in the uh, chair of Nancy Powell, who, uh, Palsy, sorry, who, who was the speaker of the house at that day. And for taking that picture, she's been awarded probably four or five years of imprisonment, just on taking that picture where she occupied the official chair physically. I'm not talking about arson, I'm not talking about rights. And there are people who have been charged with 18 years of imprisonment. Why all our uh, participants, and, and if they believe in, they should, should continue with it. If you want to have the right of violent agitation, then you should accept the lawful consequence of that behavior. Isn't it? If I, uh, God forbid, kill someone, I should know that there is a capital punishment as a consequence of my action. Well, there is a due process. There is a due process. I'm not engaging in that debate with you. Uh, uh, I have got very strong reservations when there was a law which does say that military courts can be conducted by then this apex courts even uh, thrashes out the law. You all are students of law over here. It is only function of the parliament to make laws. It is not the function of the superior judiciary to make laws. Why do they make law? It could be a good law or a bad law, but it is the function of the parliament. When you enter into a marital contract, then you have got exclusive uh, physical rights to each other. Third party cannot enter. So it is a third party entry if they do that. So I've got very strong views on that too. But let's agree to disagree. And this is the way we should talk. We should vent it out. We should think about it. We should uh, th uh, talk about and think about even the alternate view. I might get something uh, quite enlightening from your side. Or otherwise, you may get it from my side. But this is, this is the kind of dialogue or, or conversation we should have. We cannot have monologues. What is happening in this society? There is one group who's supporting PMLN. There is a group which is supporting PTI. And then there are religious groups. And what actually they are doing, they are retreating whatever convictions they have. They are reinforcing that on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, in normal conversations. That's why when you raise question, you receive applause. What is the point of having applause for a question? Why? Do, do you understand or do you realize? Why should I be expecting applause for, for an answer? The question should be raised in the true spirit of inquiry. It should not be for appreciation. But there is, we, I understand, all of us, we have constituencies. So that constituency translates that support into the applause. That's what we are doing. That's where my point comes that we will go for plagiarism. We will not be able to create knowledge. Mm -hmm. Criticize anything. You want to criticize military. You want to criticize judiciary. You want to criticize parliament, economy, politics. Just one single couplet of Iqbal again for guidance. Gila be jabi kare koi to lazim hai shahur. Beja gila karo. Doesn't matter. Lekin shahur ke saath. Bagayre shahur ke na karo. Thank you. Last couple of questions. I am available. It's your choice. हेलो अस्सलाम वालेकुम वालेकुम अस्सलाम तो सुबह डॉन न्यूज़ में पब्लिश हुआ था कि पाकिस्तान ने अफगान जो रेफ्यूजीज हैं उनको डिपोर्ट करना शुरू कर दिया है और दो अफराद जो हैं वो कंटेनर के उल्टा होने से जो हमारे सामान की जो कंटेनर्स होते हैं उसमें उनको भर भर के डाला जा रहा है और बॉर्डर्स के पास जाके छोड़ा जा रहा है 
تو دو افراد ہلاک ہیں چودہ زخمی ہیں ایز کیئر ٹیکر پی ایم آف دا کنٹری ایز دا پریمیئر آف دا کنٹری ڈو یو ناٹ تھنک دیٹ دس از اگین وی میک اٹ سیم ٹو دا ریسٹ آف دا ورلڈ کہ وی آر سو میگانمس لوک ویئر پور کنٹری ویئر اسٹرگلنگ سو مچ بٹ ویو ٹیکن ان ملینس آف افغان ریفیوجیز ایم گیونگ دم چانس ایٹ اے گڈ لائف از دس اے چانس ایٹ اے گڈ لائف اینڈ ڈو یو وٹ از یور گورمنٹ اسینشلی گوئنگ ٹو ڈو ٹو انشور دیٹ سچ لاس آف لائف لائک ویو سین دس مارننگ does not happen and that they're treated humanely even if the deportation is happening that it follows the due process of the law and it follows refugee law as well at the same time first of all i i get so overwhelmed and so happy when people and youngsters like yourself speak with passion i really like it this is the way one should be first of all my dear where are you from are you from lahore where are you from if i may ask karachi okay first of all we are not sending one single refugee to afghanistan this is the biggest this is the biggest skewed presentation of our policy which i keep repeatedly explaining to the people uh, in my cabinet outside the cabinet on the tv and give it to her i have to explain it to her like i do it to my cabinet colleagues <laughs> there are around 5 million afghans on this soil for last 50 years or 40 or 45 years and there are three categories of those people the one is registered afghan refugee whom we have got obligation according to 1951 geneva convention which by the way was the product of holocaust and it was during uh, uh, or no not during post second world war when the holocaust was happening in germany the r- jews were running away and they were trying to have asylum in different part of the world this 1951 geneva convention was designed by league of nation and then uh, adopted by uh, united nations we are by the way not signatory to that convention pakistan is a state let me clarify that too without a signatory we have entertained those refugees for 40 45 years and anyone who's registered with UNHCR and our authorities as a as a refugee and who's residing either in the camps or otherwise is not being sent back this is not what we are doing then there are people which is around 1 or 1.2 million who are categorized as illegal aliens they don't have any sort of documents they don't have travel documents they either are here uh, we don't know maybe leading a prayer in a mosque or engaging with a terrorist or maybe with a drug lord or maybe contributing as a nurse in some hospital they are both categories good and bad both but we are not visible to that we don't know i don't know whether you are a good student or a poor student but you are a student that's all i know so in my system i don't have visibility on them and there is a need which all the countries around the world do including afghanistan including afghanistan if you attempt and if you try to go there without documents without pakistani passport you will see what kind of experiment you get over there they don't allow entry without documents you have to have a visa a travel document but for them they want to have it all free so what we have done here that we are trying to bring them into a system and all these illegal aliens phase wise we are sending them back encouraging them to go voluntarily or otherwise send them back uh, according to the law there is law foreign act is there which empowers us that we send back any foreigner or alien who is not into uh, uh, lawful into our lawful system once they go back they have all the right to come back they are not uh, perpetually banned from re entering into pakistan if they want to come back they should issue a travel document from their own country go to our mission get a visa from there whether they want to come for for studies for business for any other purpose just 
uh, tourist visa, whatever, they definitely can come. But we need a regulated moment and regime with our neighbor. Uh, we should have done it earlier. We are late, but we're going to do it now. Um, sir, I absolutely agree. There needs to be, you know, a documentation of all the citizens of Pakistan, and we obviously cannot proceed without having Nadra cards, without having CNICs, all of that. They also cannot then access the healthcare system and other provisions. I completely agree with you there. What we saw this morning was people being loaded into cargo trucks, and I don't know if you you would want to deny the Dawn news report as completely false. In which circumstance this conversation would not be happening, oh. but two people have died in the legal process of deportation that is happening. Uh, I, I again, uh, some ninety thousand people have been killed in this country, while some sort of role of uh, such individuals has been. Uh, identified and concluded by the authorities in this country. I mean, I am pained too, as like you are pained by these two deaths. There are many deaths on all the sides. Are we for the deaths? No. Has an accident happened? I will see into that. Was it deliberate? No. We're not murderers. Come Absolutely. on. You know, I'm not saying that. We right? Are. Yeah. And 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 sometime, you know. Uh, what happened uh, on the boats in, in, in and around Mediterranean when people uh, watched them criminally uh, when they were drowning? Pakistan has not done that. Uh, what happens in the um, uh, strong uh, conservative immigration regime of Australia? They have uh, created islands where they do not uh, allow anyone to come to their shores and take uh, advantage of their asylum laws. So what we are doing over here this morning, I had a cabinet meeting in which I think so there would be few who were sitting there that we have to ensure the dignity of the people because they would be vulnerable. Uh, they would be women, they would be children, and we cannot give license to our own either police agencies or other state agencies to take advantage of these vulnerable groups. I've uh, instructed by my interior minister that it should get translated to the execution level, to the implementation level. We are trying, I am a Pashtun myself. I, uh, most of them, they come from my ethnicity. So I won't be insensitive to the cultural requirements, to other uh, humanistic requirements. All I can assure you that we are uh, equally decent human beings just like yourself. If you are feeling for these two deaths, trust me, we do too. And and we not just feel for them, we try to rectify also that something bad does not happen. And at the same time, our uh, policies get implemented too. Whatever. I am dependent on my MS. Let's have. Yeah, 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 we can take a bit. Sir, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, if we talk about KP and Balochistan, we have been in the past two decades of religious extremism and fundamentalism and terrorism. لیکن ہماری جو سٹیٹ ہے اور پولیٹیکل لیڈرشپ ان کی ایک سالیڈ یونیفائیڈ پالیسی نہیں رہی ہے اس ایکسٹریمیزم اور ٹیرزم سے متعلق فور انسٹنس ٹی ٹی پی کو پہلے آزاد چھوڑا گیا پھر اس وقت آپریشن ہوا پھر اس کے بعد جنرل فیس صاحب آئے انہوں نے ان کو ری لیکوئٹ کرنے کی کوشش کی ٹرائیبل ایریاز میں پھر اب افغان حکومت کے ساتھ مل کے ان کے خلاف کریک ڈاؤن ہو رہا ہے اس کی وجہ سے جو پشتون اور بلوچ یوت ہیں ان میں ایک انٹی سٹیٹ اور ایک انٹی آرمی سنٹمنٹ پایا جاتے ہیں جو کہ آپ کو بھی پتا ہوگا اور جو ٹرانسلیٹ کرتا ہے آئیڈنٹیٹی پولیٹکس میں فور انسٹنس پختون تحفظ مومنٹ بلوچستان لیبریشن آرمی ایکسٹرا ایکسٹرا سو فرس اف اول مائی قویسن ایس وائی ہیز دی سٹیٹ اور دی پولیٹیکل لیڈرشپ اسپیشلی اف کے پی ان بلوچستان we not not been able to have this single unified policy against all sorts of terrorism so and what what's the solution how how do we avoid this kind of dilemma that we are in where are you from i'm from ardan kp pukhtun 
I mean, I'm so happy that you raised this, honest to God. Ek to ye jo aapke counterparts hain na, jo other provinces ke, particularly Sindh or Punjab, they they are very naive. They at times uh, don't know or they have not been through the experiences probably which uh, uh, the people from KPN and Balochistan has gone through. And according to one of your colleague that they are more aware. I feel politically our people are more conscious than these urban center kids. And uh, no, no, no offense. It's just a political conversation. Our, our people are, have been more active in the movement of MRD. They have been more uh, conscious in contributing uh, movement against one unit, so on and so forth. So our youth, our political leadership have been very, very active politically. This is what I'm referring to. You, but the urban centers has more advantages. The political side, these rural class have uh, been more contributing towards shaping the political uh, landscape of Pakistan. Uh, first of all, what should be the relationship of violence and state? Let's address this question first. Let's bring it in a chronological order. The state should have monopoly over violence. If we settle on this question, the later on uh, following chronological order can be explored and understood quite well. Now, what happens that a group emerges within the society and it wants to have a shareholding in the company of the state and it says, no, I also have got the right to violence. If state can be violent, why not me? And for the political reasons that I will tell state how to translate its foreign policy. I will tell state whom to align with. I will tell state on the basis of either religion, ethnicity, whatever. In our case, religion and ethnicity too. What is TTP? Why are TTP is killing us? Because they feel that we sided uh, with the Americans uh, in the war on terror. This is the prime criticism of it. So they want to determine the foreign policy on all of us through tool of violence. That if you do not change this policy of yours, I will blow myself and I will kill you. This is what exactly we are doing. And then in the society, be it uh, political leadership based on nationalism or or ethnic nationalism, religious nationalism or ethnic nationalism. The role of, of these leadership were that they had to educate and, and contribute towards e opinion making, which unfortunately we are not doing. What we are doing, as I was referring over here, that I am more interested in a constituency. I want an applause on my question. I want an applause on my answer. And I see what is the rhetoric and the popular view amongst this audience. And I align myself with this rhetoric. I do not lead. I become a follower. So these leaders, which probably you were referring to, to me, they are all dwarfs. They are all followers. They are not leaders. If they would have been leaders, they would have dissected all these tendencies on historical basis. Do you know who the Khwarijis were? Most of you would know. If any religious leadership in Pakistan would have been genuine, they would have or should have a view on Khwarijis in the initial days of the Islam. Who accused Sayyidina Ali? Amir Mawi, he said, Dono kafir. When Amir Maljam was, was arrested and uh, he was asked to oh, uh, Mara, so he had no remorse. He had no remorse. So this is the kind of attitude you are facing and you are mum and silent and ignorant and just growing beard and uh, interested in your audience 
which is more rhetorical, which is more popul uh, related to populism, what would be the end product? The end product would be the kind of a chaos we are experimenting in Pakistan. Same goes with, with our nationalist leaders. Wait, now this is my turn. You ask your question. Do you know your place in Mardan and my place in Quetta was sold about a hundred years back? Sold by whom? By our great Afghan compatriots. When no doubt Peshawar was Afghanistan, when no doubt Quetta was Afghanistan, but when the British Raj was extending towards uh, Tsarist Russia and the great game was happening, in the Treaty of Gandamak, it was sold for some rupees. So I am the sold part, you are the sold part. How come we uh, go back and who would uh, have uh, the settlement of this one century, uh, which the payment, by the way, has been received by the people residing in Kabul and Kandahar. So we are the sold one. Has these national leadership told you that, uh, oh, our forefathers have sold us. Have you heard? I, I, do you want me to name them? I, I want to avoid. Some are from Charsada, some are from Gulistan, and some are now recently in PTM. Have they ever told you that we have been sold? Pashtuns have never been asked that what sort of a house they want. In 5,000 years of their history, Kaknika, who is the ancestral forefather of my tribe, is buried in Irak, who has a history of 5,000 years. Never they've been asked once in 1947, and they chose to remain in Pakistan. So Pashtun has got all psychological, social, political, economical stakes in the state of Pakistan. The biggest Pashtun population is not in Kabul, not in Kandahar, not in Quetta, not in Peshawar, it is in Karachi. Probably now followed by Lahore. Go and see the slums of Lahore, go and see uh, the surroundings of Lahore. Uh, there is a huge Pashtun population even here now. The nation state is just like body politic. If you stop the blood flow movement, you will face death. The entire body politic of the nation state, the movement of the people has to be free. This is one of the basic definition of the state. Anyone can go to Waziristan and any Wazir can go and, and settle in Gwadar or in Karachi or anywhere else. You cannot restrict on the basis of identity and translate all the policies on that basis. The modernization phase in 21st century is gone beyond. You're living in the era of artificial intelligence. And we are stuck that Gwadar jo hai wo bar ke log nahi aa sakte. Okay? Kaan ke aa sakte? What is the uh, uh, American experiment? America turned into, all of you, you, I know you want to go to US, whether somebody accepts it or denies it. Why? Because it attracted the best of the best around the world. And I can't send a teacher to Kalat or to Mastung because he is a Punjabi. How can this social experiment grow? It can't. We have to be very realistic now. Let me take the last one. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, but she's insipid. Right. Um, so, sir, amidst the declining economic growth, increasing debt, um, political instability, and whatnot, I am genuinely curious that why did you feel the need to come to LAMS and address the students here? No, it's not, it's not, it's not, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it's not a humiliating question. No, no, no I, I but don't get humiliated by I this. am genuinely curious that amidst all these situations and conditions that are, and situations that are happening in Pakistan and are affecting the people, why did you feel like, what was the motive behind this invite or rather you're coming to Lums? I want to know. Thanks. 
you know, uh, not just like yourself, but I do get puzzled uh, by all these challenges which uh, we are in the midst of it. Political, social, economic, all of it. And on the top of that, I've got a role also to play. Uh, to respond uh, to all these challenges. And uh, while I am uh, dispensing all these uh, duties of my constitutional duties, I had a plan to go to all the uh, capitals of all the provinces. And Lahore was the last, unfortunately. I, I did not come to Punjab. I did uh, come to Janawala when, when that incident occurred, but didn't come to Punjab's capital, Lahore. And when we were discussing my visit here in Lahore, uh, the idea to come to Lums fascinated me so much because I wanted to see that are there genuinely people in our generation who can take up to the challenges of all that in which I uh, find myself in the midst as, as, uh, as in a deep crisis. You also find yourself. Because when I come across other sections of the society, I at time am not that hopeful. Let me be very honest. And I always uh, am looking for, for the solution based and answers that where and how can we get out of it and who would be the people and the human resource and the individuals who would play a role uh, to turn around this because the crisis is there. No one can deny that. Uh, you might have a different approach to resolve that crisis. I may have a different approach to that. But we do need a, a kind of a human resource and individuals who could be engineers of social change, who could be contributors towards the settlement of this crisis. And every nation and any nation has taken such paths. So where do we get our raw material? Lums? is one answer. IBA, another one. GIK, third one. And there are few others also. So this is one of the reasons that I was very much attracted towards the institution of LUMS. And I decided that I have to be here. And that's why I'm here. And I'm sorry if you are disappointed. <laughs> this was one of the reasons. So and, and I'm very encouraged, by the way. One more. Chal tu kar. नहीं मगर सर मेरा सवाल ये नहीं मेरा सवाल तो ये है कि सर मेरा सवाल जर्नल वाला के ऊपर है सर पूरे शहर के चर्च के ऊपर आग लगा दी गई और हमारी हुकूमत ने कुछ नहीं किया आप सर ऑफिस में ही थे अगर मेरी इल्म में कमी हो तो सर प्लीज इजाफा करें मगर जितना मुझे इल्म है आप सर ऑफिस में थे और आपके होते ये हुआ मगर क्या हुकूमत ने सर उसके ऊपर एक्शन लिया है जी सर आप गए आपने सर प्रॉब्ली उनके चर्चेस और के लिए आपने उनको पैसे दे दिए होंगे मगर क्या ये सलूशन है सर क्या ये एक लॉन्ग टर्म सलूशन है कितने सर और मंदिर चल रहेंगे पाकिस्तान में कितने सर और ईसाइयों चर्च को आपसे जलाएंगे तो हुकूमत को ये एक्चुअल सलूशन की तरफ आएगी शुक्रिया मुझे खुशी ये हो रही है कि तुम अपनी माइनॉरिटीज के लिए इतना स्ट्रांगली फील करते हो ये एक खुशी की बात है हालांकि तुम तो बहुत मायूस मुझे लग रहे हो हुकूमत के हवाले से हम मायूस नहीं है आपके हवाले से पचास मिनट बेटा मैं इसलिए लेट आया कि मैं आपके बिहाफ पे एक कैबिनेट मीटिंग स्टार्ट कर चुका था और कैबिनेट मीटिंग में जिस तरह की डिलिब्रेशन और जिस तरह की डिस्कशन अल्लाह ताला तुम्हें उस मुकाम तक कभी पहुंचाए किसी भी कैपेसिटी में ज़रूरी नहीं कि इंसान कैबिनेट मेंबर हो सकता है एज अ ब्यूरोट हो एज अ टेक्नोक्रैट हो उसमें बहुत सारी ऐसी चीज़ें होती हैं जिसके बड़े दूरस नतज आपकी ज़िंदगी के लिए भी हैं इसकी ज़िंदगी के लिए भी हैं उसकी ज़िंदगी के लिए भी हैं और मैं अगर वक्त को लिमिट कर दूं और ये कहूं 
کہ میں اس میں ایڈیشنل تیس منٹ پینتیس منٹ یا چالیس منٹ نہیں کہوں گا کیونکہ میرا چندہ وان آغاز ہو جائے گا جو کہ انتظار کر رہا ہے اور وہ ڈسیزن لوں جو ال انفارمڈ ہو پراپر ڈسکشن کا پروڈکٹ نہ ہو تو جس کام کے لیے مجھے چنا گیا ہے نا پرائمرلی وہ کام میں نہیں کر رہا ہوں گا مجھے اس کام کے لیے نہیں چنا گیا ہے کہ میں آ کے لمز میں آپ سے بات کروں یہ میں صرف ایک ایڈیشنل پرسنل پرولیج کو ایکسپلائٹ کرتے ہوئے میں نے کیا یہ ہم دونوں کی اگریمنٹ سے ہوا آپ نے اگری کیا کہ ہم آئیں گے میں نے اگری کیا کہ میں ایڈریس کروں گا یہ کسی کانسٹیٹیوشنل ارینجمنٹ کی ریکوائرمنٹ نہیں ہے نہ میرا بولنا نہ آپ کا سننا جب ہم والنٹیئر کرتے ہیں تو اس والنٹیئر میں بعض اوقات وقت کے جو تقاضے ہوتے ہیں نا وہ ریلسٹکلی آپ کے اساتذہ سے میں پندرہ منٹ بولا بیس منٹ بولا وہ بھی آپ کے جو انسٹیٹیوشن کے حوالے سے کچھ چیزیں تھیں تو پچپن منٹ میں پچیس منٹ وہ نکال دو پینتیس منٹ رہ گئے پینتیس منٹ کی معذرت جو میں نے آپ کو کابینہ کی ایکسپلینیشن دی ہے شاید وہ اس کو کمپنسیٹ کر دے کیونکہ ہمارا ایک والنٹیئر انٹریکشن ہے ہمارا کوئی اسٹرکٹلی پروفیشنلی باؤنڈیڈ پیڈ سروسز ریلیشن شپ نہیں ہے کہ مجھے یہاں پانچ بج کر پانچ منٹ پر آنا تھا اور تم مایوس ہو گئے اور اس مایوسی کے بدلے میں جو ہے نا میں نے اس کو کمپنسیٹ کرنا ہے یو ہیڈ آل دا رائٹ ٹو لیو دس فال آپ کو کسی نے اس پہ پابند نہیں کرنا تھا کسی نے برا نہیں کہنا تھا کیونکہ ایک والنٹیئر پرزنس تھی آپ تو آئندہ ایسی چیزوں پہ مایوس نہ ہوا کرو اور اسٹے پازیٹیو یہ ہمارے دیکھو میں میرے چھوٹے بھائیوں کی طرح یہ اس ایج میں نا انسان کو غصہ بڑا آتا وہ اینگر مینجمنٹ جو ہے نا دیٹ از دی موسٹ میں اپنے بیٹے کو کہتا ہوں جب بھی کوئی ایسی حرکت کرتا ہے نا میں اس کو کہتا ہوں اینگر مینجمنٹ اینگر مینجمنٹ وہ بعد میں جب مجھے کوئی غصہ آتا ہے نا وہ بھی ٹانٹ کرتے ہیں مجھے یہی کہتا ہے کہ جی اینگر مینجمنٹ کرو تو چیزوں کو ریلیٹیولی ہم یومنسٹک لیول پہ تھوڑا سا نارمل لیتے ہیں یہ بہت سختی ہم نے ایک دوسرے کے لیے بنا لی ہے تھوڑا سا ایز ڈاؤن کرتے ہیں چلیں آخری کوشچن لیتے ہیں یار وہ سارے تم لوگ ناراض ہو گئے اسی طرح پچپن منٹ والے چلیں آئی آئی لیو اٹ یو تھینک یو سو مچ سر فرسٹ آف آل میرا کوشچن آپ سے یہ تھا سر جب آپ الیکٹ ہوئے تھے نا ایز اے کیئر ٹیکر ٹھیک ہے سلیکٹ ہوئے تھے اچھا میں سلیکٹ بھی نہیں ہوا تھا میں نامنیٹ ہوا تھا چلو تو بلوچستان کے لوگوں کو آپ سے سر بہت توقع تھی کہ آپ جو ہے نا پہلی بار ایک کیئر ٹیکر پرائم منسٹر آپ آئے ہیں اتنے وقت میں تو آپ بہت زیادہ ڈیولپمنٹ پروجیکٹس اور کیا کہتے ہیں ایک نا ایک ایسی اپروچ لے کر آئیں گے کہ جتنے بھی ریزرویشنز ہیں چاہے پشتونس کے ہیں چاہے بلوچوں کے ہیں وہ سب آپ حل کریں گے لیکن مجھے یاد پڑتا ہے کہ وہ جو کچھ لاکھ سے قلعہ سیفلا تھا کہ ڈبل روڈ بن رہا تھا وہ بھی روک گیا ہے سر اور دوسرا دوسرا یہ جو افغان ریفیوجیز کا مسئلہ آ گیا ہے سر میں کوئٹہ سے ہوں سر سر کوئٹہ کی ہاف پاپولیشن ہاف جو کاروبار ہے جو بزنس ہے سارا وہ افغان ریفیوجیز رن کرتے ہیں تو اگر یہ سخت اور اسٹرکٹ ڈپورٹیشن آپ نے جو اسٹارٹ کی ہے سر اس کی وجہ سے آپ نے آپ نے یہ کانسیکوینسز سوچے کہ کوئٹہ میں اور بلوچستان میں اسپیسیفکلی وہ پاپولیشن جو پہلے سے ہی اتنی زیادہ اگریوڈ ہے اور اتنے اس کے تحفظات ہیں اس پر کیا گزرے گی اور یہ جو ایک نا وے وے ٹیروریزم کی اس کو کتنا جو ہے نا اس ڈپورٹیشن اور اس سارے مسئلے سے کتنی جو ہے نا اس کو ایک گروتھ ملے گی تو کیا آپ نے اس کے بارے میں کوئی ایک نا انفارم ڈیسیجن لیا یا کوئی آپ نے مجھے تو نہیں لگتا کہ آپ نے کوئی انٹرنل جو اسٹیک ہولڈرز تھے چاہے وہ بلوچستان سے ہوں چاہے وہ کے پی سے ہیں آپ نے ان کو بھی جو ہے نا لیا ہوگا ایک وہ جو پی ایم کی ایک اسپیسیفک کابینہ ہوتی ہے وہ سب سے ایلیٹ اور ٹاپ لیول والے وہ ڈیسیجن لیتے ہیں سر تو مائی کوشچن ٹو یو دیٹ کہ آپ نے اس اس مسئلے کو کیسے اپروچ کیا آپ کوئٹہ میں کہاں سے سید ہیں سر سید کربلا ہے اچھا وہ یہ لاسٹ کوشچن اس سے آ گیا ایک تو بار بار میں یہ گزارشات کر رہا ہوں اور کرتا رہوں گا ظاہر میرا میرا فی الحال یہ کام ہے 
देखिए मैं जब नॉमिनेट होकर वहां आया आ, वो नॉमिनेशन मुझे इस बात पे रेजिमेंटल अंदाज में नहीं उबार सकती है कि मैं बाकी सूबों के डेवलपमेंट फंड्स उठाऊं और बलूचिस्तान को दे दू ठीक है मैं जिला किला सैफुल्ला का वजीर आजम तो हूं नहीं ना मैं जिला पशीन का हूं अगर मुझे पाकिस्तान की वफाकी हुकूमत की रियासत की जिम्मेदारी दी गई है जो कि है इस केस में मैंने उसको पूरे पैराए में देखना है पूरे कॉन्टेक्स में देखना है आप जानते हैं कि पाकिस्तान जिस तरह की फाइनेंशियल क्रंच से गुजर रहा है आई एम एफ के प्रोग्राम्स का हमें सामना है टैक्स देना यहाँ पर गुनाह तस्वुर किया जाता है लोग मेरे जैसे आप जैसे मेरे बड़े आपके बड़े हमारे आसपास के लोग आप जरा निगाह दौड़ाएं इस हॉल में बैठे हुए तमाम लोगों को मैं कहता हूं मुझसे तो बड़े लोग नाराज और सख्त क्वेश्चन करने की कोशिश करते हैं कितने अपने घर में और अपने आसपास के लोगों का आपको पता है जो पाकिस्तान में टैक्स कंट्रीब्यूट नहीं करते तो आप सिर्फ अपने आप से पूछे मुझे छोड़ दें मुझे जवाब नहीं चाहिए खुद से सिर्फ सवाल करें टैक्स टू जी रेशियो पाकिस्तान में दस फीसद चाहिए सबको स्कैंडिनेविया है जहां पे टैक्स टू जीडीपी रेशियो बयानवे फीसद है मैंने जब वो कुचलाख की ड्यूल रोड बनानी होगी ना जब ये फोर्टी परसेंट पे आ जाएगा ना मैं उस तरह की दो रोडें बना दूंगा टैक्स तो कंट्रीब्यूट कोई करता नहीं है रोड हर एक मांगता है अस्पताल हर एक कहां से मैं रोड बनाऊंगा कहां से मैं अस्पताल बनाऊंगा मुझे आप बेहद साबित कर सकते हैं लेकिन मेरे पास तो ये रिसोर्सेज है रेवेन्यू जनरेशन तो मैंने आप लोगों से करनी है आपसे टैक्स कलेक्ट करना है वो कोई देता नहीं है और अगर दें तो उस पर कई किस्म के जो इल्जाम है वो अपनी तरफ से हैं देखिए दोबारा मैं आपको अर्ज कर रहा हूं हम अफगान रेफ्यूजीज को नहीं निकाल रहे हैं इलीगल्स को निकाल रहे हैं और इलीगल्स ने अगर उस इकोनमी में अपना एक स्ट्रक्चर बना दिया है आप जाए ना यूके में और वहां पे मैकडोनल्ड्स में बगैर टैक्स दिए काम करें वो तो उस पहिए में काम हो रहा है ना कर सकते हैं आप फ्रांस में आप किसी रेस्टोरेंट में हॉस्पिटैलिटी इंडस्ट्री में किसी को वाइन का ग्लास दे सकते हैं आ, सामन फिश खिला सकते हैं नहीं खिला सकते हैं डियर आपको टैक्स देना पड़ेगा वेन यू विल बी हैविंग दैट सैलरी उसका एक पोर्शन फ्रेंच की रियासत को जाएगा ब्रिटिश रियासत को जाएगा यहाँ पे 40 साल से आपके भी बाग में काम कर रहे हैं मेरे भी बाग में काम कर रहे हैं और मैंने उस स्टेक होल्डर से जो न एग्रीकल्चर टैक्स देता है न वहां पे उस लेबर का टैक्स देता है लेकिन चूंकि वो स्टेक होल्डर है नाराज है वो मुझे गले से भी पकड़ेगा और कहेगा ये मैं क्या ड्रेकोनियन पॉलिसीज इंप्लीमेंट कर रहा हूँ मैं बहुत अच्छी तरीके से बलुस्तान और के को अलहमदुल्ला जानता हूँ मुझे पता है कि वहां पर हम क्या करते हैं ये शायद इन बिचारों को ना पता मैं और आप तो एक दूसरे को बहुत अच्छी तरीके से जानते हैं अपनी हरकतों को भी जानते हैं अपनी स्ट्रेंथ्स को भी जानते हैं अपनी वीकनेसेस को भी जानते हैं क्या टेररिज्म में ये जो ग्रोह हैं इनकी इन्वॉल्वमेंट नहीं हुई है अभी जो पेशावर में मस्जिद में प्रीवियस गवर्नमेंट के लास्ट डेज में एक सुसाइड बॉम्बिंग हुई को डेढ़ सौ बंदा शहीद हुआ उसमें जो सुसाइड बॉमर था उसके डीएनए से साबित हुए वो अफगान थे ये नहीं कि सारे अफगान टेररिस्ट हैं नॉट एट ऑल नॉट एट ऑल लेकिन दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम हमें इसको एड्रेस करना है हमारे लिए एज अ स्टेट प्राइम रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है कि सबसे पहले तुम्हारी एज अ पाकिस्तानी और इसकी एज अ पाकिस्तानी पंजाबी है काला है गोरा है सफेद है पीला है उसकी प्रोटेक्शन है जो एलियन है जो रेफ्यूजी है उसकी प्रोटेक्शन सेकंड फेज में है मुझे आईन ने पहले इसकी जिम्मेदारी दी हुई है और अगर मैं ये समझता हूं कि इस पॉपुलेशन में जो कि इलीगल पॉपुलेशन है इसका एक हिस्सा इसमें कंट्रीब्यूट कर रहा है तो मैंने कोई से हो सकता है गलत बकौले आपके जैसे कि हमने सोचा ही नहीं और इलीट के दो चार लोगों को व्हाट्सएप किया फोन शोन किया उन्होंने बता दिया हमने पॉलिसी बना दी हो सकता है यही हो लेकिन हो सकता है कि बहुत सारी इंस्टीट्यूशनल इनपुट्स के बाद जो 
تحصیل کی سطح سے لے کے ضلع کی سطح سے لے کے ڈویژن کی سطح سے لے کے سول اداروں سے لے کے ملٹری اداروں سے لے کے یہ پور ان انفارمیشن آتی ہے اس پہ ڈسکشن ہوتی ہے پھر اس کے نتیجے میں کوئی پالیسی بنتی ہے ایسے نہیں ہوتا ہے اسٹیٹ کرافٹ میں کہ بس بیٹھے بٹھائے جو ہے نا ہم دو چار کپ کافی کے پی کے کو ڈسیزن کر دیں تھینک یو سو مچ